Hey, brothers and sisters, I have this young man who just showed up at my house, and I had just shared the gospel with uh, another young man, and uh, this one, tell me your name? Nick. Nick. Oh, Nick. <laughs> In the nick of time, Jesus is coming. Well, he came to my house uh, to look at the roof, but he's willing to be interviewed as I'm wow. sharing the gospel with him. We're going to see how he does. So, you, Nick, you think you're a good person, right? I think so. I tend to think of myself as one. And you said you're, you've are you heard about the rapture all your life? Yes, ma'am. And uh, your grandmother or your family? My mom. Your so mom. Southern Baptist, Texas raised. Okay. Yes, well, yep. Yeah, in Texas, they talk about the rapture. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. Nick, you said you're a good, good person. So, you're willing to take a little good person test and yes, see how you do? Of course. Okay. Okay. Why is it this whole gener? He's 23. Deadrian, who I just shared the gospel with, is 22, and he gives the of course answer to everything too. It's like of course, of course. It's like the code word for your generation. Okay, Nick. This one. Um, you say you're a good person. This We're going to do a little good test of through going through the Ten Commandments. Just okay. a few of them, okay? And speak up so you know they can hear you over the All wind right. and everything, okay? All right. Okay, Nick. Have you ever said a lie? I have. What does that make you? A sinner. No, what kind of sinner? Same as same as everyone else. <laughs> no, a person who tells lies you would call a liar. Liar. Yes, okay. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small? No, ma'am. Never ever. No, ma'am. Not even taken a dollar from anybody. No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? Is O M G count? Yes. Like the, okay, I have. Yes. yes okay. And you love your mother, and you would never use your mother's name as a cuss word, right? No, ma'am. But God gave you your mother, and you would flippantly use his name, which is called blasphemy in the yes. Old Testament, which is punishable by death. Did you yes. know that? I have okay. heard that. Um, have you ever hated anybody? Hated no strong dislike for someone, yes, but I don't hate people. Everybody kind of has their own lifestyle and everything that kind of makes them tick. So if I do something to trigger somebody, I can't really hate them for it. Yeah, so, okay. Well, I had, yeah. see, I'm coming up on 19 years being born again, okay. and I did I did hate people yes, because I hated I hate a few people, <laughs> and so I was 45 <laughs> when God started showing me my sins. Yes, okay, have you ever heard of the sin of idolatry? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you know what it is? Placing things before God. Okay, yes, and it's breaking the first commandment, right? God said you must have no other gods before me. So, yes, would you say that uh, your the thing that you love the most in life is? The thing that I love the most, probably my girlfriend. Okay. Um, thing that I end up doing the most, probably Xbox. Okay. And I'm guilty, I'll admit it, I do let the Xbox get in the way of quiet time a lot. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so God gave you your time, and you recognize you're not using it how he would want you to do it. Yes, Because you're not, like, focused on him. Yes, Right? Okay, and I accidentally pushed the wrong button. <laughs> okay, so you have a girlfriend. Yes, ma'am. Do you know that Jesus said whoever looks with lust commits adultery in his heart. Are yes, you guilty of lust? I am. Okay, and you have not had premarital sex? No, ma'am. Okay, so, but you are guilty of lust, which yes. makes you an adulterer at heart, according to Jesus. And, um, let's see, you never stole anything. So, according to your testimony, and we're just going through a few of the commandments. Yes, you are a liar, a, an adulterer at heart, blasphemed one time, you know, do you know the Bible says if you're guilty of one sin, you're gu guilty of them all? Yes, sir. Okay. And idolatry at heart. So you're standing before God on Judgment Day. What are you going to tell him? Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I would say, too, right? And forgiveness is not just saying you're sorry, right? Yes, ma'am. So what did God do? Because you're guilty yes, sir. for one sin, you're guilty of them all. Yes, sir. You're standing before the judge. What did God do for your guilt? He sent Jesus to die for us, so that way if we repent and we accept Jesus, then he will forgive us. Okay, so then the question is, you, you it's like you've got your parachute on. Yes, ma'am. But your parachute's not tight, mm -hmm. right? Would you say that you're a born-again Christian? Yes, ma'am, I would say that. Um, kind of, I grew up throughout life being a Christian, but then once I hit about 12 years old is when I really started to kind of see what Christianity was all about and uh -huh. when I truly accepted Jesus into my heart. Did you get baptized? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. And um, so, if you were to rate your... If Jesus came today, do you think that you would... Say he came today in the rapture, because that's yes. what you believe I believe in the rapture. 
Is there any sin that you're in, even idolatry of your girlfriend and your Xbox, that would cause you to be left behind? Yes, ma'am. Um, I pray every every night that Jesus and the Lord will forgive me for my sins, but I'm just, I'm still a sinner, just like all of us are, so hopefully I've done enough repenting and will continue to do enough repenting to where I'm accepted into heaven. You know, Jesus says in um, Revelation, he says that he must be your first love. Yes, sir. That love for Jesus should look like hatred of your mother and your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, so have you? Uh, how's your Bible reading going? It's existent. It's just not as diligent as it should be. It's about a three to four day a week thing as opposed to how it should be seven. Okay. So really, what I'm trying to do, and I appreciate your willingness to come on camera, yes, because I would say that you are saved. You know that you are born again by your own testimony. Mm -hmm. You would say that. Yes, sir. But that doesn't mean that God is pleased enough with you to say, this is my son who's going in the rapture. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the rapture is for those who are devoted to Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And... Um, so I take it that this conversation, and I'm having to look at you through the camera, <laughs> but I'm taking this as God's, like an appointment. Yes, sir. That God brought you here. You know, I didn't. I had already witnessed one time this morning mm -hmm. to a, a lost sinner who's fornicating, mm -hmm. blaspheming. You know, doing all of this. Yes, sir. And I said, you know, you have to surrender your girl. You know, you have to surrender your sex mm -hmm. life. To and I'm assuming you don't ever look at porn. No. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> But, you know, it's like he, he wants Jesus, but he's not sure he's ready mm -hmm. to surrender. You know, so I gave him a Bible. I gave him a gospel track. I gave him this letter. Show the, show the people. I gave you this letter. Yes, I am. <laughs> he's, what did you say about the letter? Which part? Oh, yeah, You said, tell, tell him about you were in, your, in the service. And yeah, so when I went to basic training, uh, I was going through a pretty dark period. So my mom would write me a lot of, of spiritual-based letters. Uh, the one that she really wrote that meant the most to me, was she compared Jesus to a white poodle puppy and the devil to a black jackal and just how they fight for dominance in your heart. So that's something that's always kind of stuck with me because I'm, I'm a huge dog person. I love dogs. Are you a dog person? Yes, ma'am. I used to have a golden doodle, but she passed away. Mm. And she's in my heavenly home. Yes, ma'am. So, um, so anyway, so I do believe, you know, this is an appointment to get you right. Do you know, are you from Georgia? Yes, ma'am. Born and raised. Born and raised. Did you know that there are 15,000 guillotines here in Georgia? I did not. That's in my letter. <laughs> our our government purchased them in like 1993 or okay. so. Mm -hmm. You know what a guillotine is for? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The 22-year-old uh, did not know what it is, but it's <laughs> that blade that comes and chops yes, off your head. So they have 15,000 of them here in okay. Georgia. We're not really supposed to be talking about it. I might even get my, my video <laughs> might be uh, censored for that, but <clears throat> they have plans. So you know what's going to happen during the tribulation? Um, I know the general sense um, from reading the Bible, just translating from, obviously, biblical times to now. Like you hear about they have every, like the metal dragons rolling over the tank and all, or over the hills and all that stuff. Right. I, lead, I believe that's tanks. Obviously, they didn't know what tanks were back then. So right. just stuff like that, just kind of translating is where it gets foggy. Right, right. We don't really know the absolute details. We just know mm -hmm. that we're in the season. And, you, I mean, you know that it's going to happen. Yes, ma'am. Your mom knows it's going to happen. Oh, yes, she does. <laughs> um, okay, so this is another personal question. Because my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. unfortunately, has to be about this subject because... There are many, many Christians who are deceived about this. Okay. Is uh, your mom married? She is. Is she married to your dad? Yes, ma'am. Is it a first marriage for both of them? It's not. It's second marriage for both. This is where the problem is. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, people don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that if you're, was your, uh, are both of their first spouses mar uh, still alive? I believe so, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So do you know what the Bible says that is? Blast, or, uh, adultery. It's adultery. Yes, ma'am. So this is where the problem is, mm -hmm. because I'm talking to you the same way as I would talk to my son. Yes, ma'am. And my son is a believer, says he's born again, um, but he does not accept this fact okay. anymore. And it's really, really hard. Yes, ma'am. But just because your mom knows about the rapture and talks mm -hmm. about the rapture doesn't mean she's going in the rapture mm -hmm. because of adultery. Yes, ma'am. 
So the Bible says that if you're divorced, <coughs> you cannot get remarried. Okay. And that if you are remarried, mm -hmm. if you were if you were in a gay marriage, what would you expect that couple to do if they got born again? Uh, the answer is going to let me keep my job, or the answer that I truly think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just say. I mean, if you, I mean, if someone heard the gospel that they're a, a mm -hmm. sinner and they yes, needed a savior, and they were to get born again, and yes, they're sir. in a a gay marriage, or say they're mm -hmm. fornic, maybe they're yes. living together in a fornication mm -hmm. relationship, what would you tell them to do? Uh, they, based off what the Bible says, they'd have to break up. They'd have to break yes, up. Yes, So this is where the problem is. Yes, sir. Your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. What would you say? They need to break up because they're in adultery every single day. Yes, sir. And it's a sad, sad thing. And this is why my my YouTube channel is kind of unique about this because there's so many people that are deceived by the jackal. Yes, sir. <laughs> the black jackal who's saying, "Oh no, I've got." I've got my pretty white poodle mask on, mm -hmm. and I'm okay. Yes, ma'am. But you're not okay. Not at all. You're living in adultery every single day, and adulterers, mm -hmm. if they die, even if they're professing to be Christians, if they die, adulterers go where? Hell. To hell. Yes, ma'am. A fornicator goes to hell, an adulterer goes to hell. Yes, ma'am. And so, this is the state of America. Mm -hmm. All these Christians are saying they're Christians when... God says they're in adultery or they're in fornication, and it's a terrible, terrible thing. It happens all the time. It happens every single day. Yes, ma'am. And for me, <clears throat> my husband left me mm -hmm. when I got born again in 2006. Yes, ma'am. And he's divorced. Mm -hmm. He's remarried. He is claiming to be a Christian. He is no different than your mother. Mm -hmm. And I know where he's going. He's going to hell unless he truly repents. So repentance yes, is not a, I'm saying I'm sorry, right? Mm -hmm. It's saying I'm sorry and changing the action that you're repenting for. Right. Yes, ma'am. So, I appreciate your willingness. Of I course. find this is the problem: is that all of these Christians are going to be left behind. Yes, ma'am. And I believe probably only two to three percent of people who claim to be Christians are going to be going in the rapture. Probably. And how? Can you imagine how horrific? You're just trying to think about. It. Here, your mother's been telling you about this all this time. She believes she's going in the rapture. She lives in Texas. Where does she live in Texas? Uh, she lived in Fort Worth. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. I've got a daughter in Abilene and a daughter in Austin. Okay. <clears throat> but she's been lied to by the she's been lied to by the church. Mm -hmm. You know, if she's in a church, it's a very likely the pastor has told her, "Oh, there's grace for this, right?" Yes, ma'am. That's what they say. They say, "Oh, we've been forgiven, and we can continue in the adultery." Yes, ma'am. Would you believe you're forgiven if you're still sleeping with your girlfriend? No, ma'am. No. So it's, you know, it's like they're hypocrites and they don't even realize mm -hmm. it. So I appreciate you being willing yes, to do this. I don't know, you know. Um, it's kind of hard when you're talking about your parents being adulterers, right? Yeah. It's not the easiest thing, but it's something that needs to be talked about. Yeah, and if you really loved your mom and dad, mm -hmm. you would tell them that they need to stop it. Mm -hmm. They would need to end it. And... Uh, you know, I get the people say, oh, you're, what you're promoting is um, when God says he hates divorce, mm -hmm. you're promoting what God hates. But God doesn't hate divorce from a second marriage. Mm -hmm. He only hates divorce from the covenant marriage, the yes, first sir. marriage for both people. Yes. And he hates hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And he hates, you know, they're believing the lie of the devil. Yeah. The devil saying, oh, they're there. You're okay. Mm -hmm. That pastor told you, you, you know. In <laughs> fact, there are people who get... They get baptized again yes, after they get divorced and remarried. Did you know that? I've heard of stuff similar to that. I hadn't like seen it firsthand, but I definitely heard of that. Yeah, they get baptized and then they go to a church. And some of these churches have 60, 70 percent of the people in them are divorced and remarried. Mm -hmm. And so the devil has has them. Mm -hmm. The jackal has them. Yes, ma'am. And they're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth. When they get raptured, when yeah. uh, we get raptured, I'm hoping you're going to go <laughs> with me and get raptured. I hope so. And even, <clears throat> and see, in that letter, yes, I, sh I talk about a list of sins, and in there is divorce or marriage. Nobody else's letters are going to say that. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure your mother would never write you a letter like that. <laughs> Probably not. And, you know, you were in the military? Yes, ma'am. Four years. Four years. Yes, okay. And what branch? Army. Army. Okay. Yes, and you know that people in the military have a higher divorce and remarriage rate? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You saw a lot, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. Actually, in the military, adultery itself, cheating on your spouse is uh, punishable by going to Fort Leavenworth Prison. So, is it really? Yes, ma'am. As long as, as long as it's you're yeah. cheating on your spouse, yes, but there's no judgment on whether you're cheating because you're remarried. Uh, so anything in terms of remarriage, they don't view as adultery, which is wrong. Right. But in terms of actually cheating on your spouse, that's definitely punishable by prison. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you think people run a pretty... People are careful not to cheat on their spouses? Oh, no. No. You see it all the time. People just don't care. Yeah, they don't believe in the law yeah. of the military. Yes, ma'am. Right, right, right. People believe that law is outdated, so they just ignore it, and it never really gets enforced. Right, right. right. And it really is God's law, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Ten Commandments are the moral law that our laws are based on. Yes, ma'am. Right? It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. But then people who are committing adultery because they're divorced or married mm -hmm. are yes, sinners that are going to hell. Definitely. They're not repenting. They're not saying, oh, I'm in big trouble here. Mm -hmm. If I die, I mean, do you realize how many people are divorced or married that they die and then yeah. they go to hell? Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you being in agreement with me. Yes, and, you know, we're going to pray for your parents because there are people who try tried to tell their parents. Yes, sir. Because, you, you know, Jesus says to love him with all your heart, mind, mm -hmm. soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you go to talk to your parents about this, yes, which I hope you will, mm -hmm. they, <coughs> you know, they're either going to get convicted or they're going to blow it off mm -hmm. as, oh, uh, you know, you just talked to some crazy Christian. She's, <laughs> she's radical. She's fundamentalist. But you know what? The Bible confirms what I have to say. Yes, ma'am. The Bible says... If you divorce and remarry, you committeth adultery, ongoing mm -hmm. adultery. Yes, ma'am. And if you die as an adulterer, you do not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, ma'am. So, um, anyway, I appreciate your willingness to be. Is there anything you want to say to my viewers? Just stay strong in your faith. Everything right now is trying to tear you away from it. Just hold on tight. Hold on tight. And you believe Jesus is coming, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. God bless you. You too. Y'all, so thank you for watching. Isn't Nick just, he's so, he's so sweet and respectful and still keeping his purity, his virginity, even though he's got a girlfriend, which is really wonderful. But it's a rampant, rampant problem about divorce and remarriage. It really, truly is such a terrible thing that, the churches are lying to people and how God works to bring me, you know, to bring me this young man. And we sat and talked for a while. I ended up uh, showing him about the fornication. He used, he reads the NIV. And so I showed him about Matthew five thirty two that it's except for fornication. It's not except for adultery and uh, also in Matthew 19, 9, and he understands it. So now he's in the difficult position to, uh, and he's in contact with me still. In fact, I'm probably going to be seeing him in the next few days anyway um, about my roof. But um, this morning I was, so what happened was he goes to First Redeemer Church, which is a Baptist church not that far from me. I probably am going to do part two about that church because that church is excellent, excellent on the pre-tribulation rapture. Um, and in December, I started getting all these notifications about this church. And I thought, like, Lord, am I supposed to go to that church? Because it's not very easy to find a church that's awake about the rapture. He's got some videos about the rapture about the Ezekiel 38 war and all that, that are hundreds of thousands of views. But when I went to go look at the, to the and this is where Nick goes, Nick goes to this church. And, um, but then when I went to look at their website, they have divorce care there and divorce care. I've been to, to it twice in two different churches and divorce care is a program that is to help people through divorce, but then they counsel them to find another spouse. 
and the videos and the teachings are about finding another spouse and having a blended family. And it turns out that the couple that teaches divorce care at First Redeemer is divorced and married, of course, both of them. And they have their baptisms on the website. The baptisms where they are condoning and excited about this blended family. There are no blended families in the Bible unless your spouse has died. A widow can marry a widower or someone who's never been married before. A widower can marry a widow or someone who's never been married before. Those are the only blended families. There are no blended families from divorce and remarriage. That is not in the Bible. And so uh, in Ezekiel 33, it says that if you are hearing from God, which of course I believe I'm hearing from God because why would God send this young man? I've only, I think I've only interviewed one other person like that. Normally I talk to the people that come to my house and share the gospel with them and the good person test and stuff. I don't record it, but um, I think this is the second time I've recorded someone, but you know, it's not, and it's not fun to find out. I mean, how many people are, would, would even ask, honestly, how many people would even ask someone as they're sharing the gospel if their parents are in a first marriage for both of them? I don't know if anybody does. I know, I know Ray Comfort certainly does not. He does not ask these young people. And a lot of these young people have divorced or married parents. A lot of them do. Maybe not as many in California. I don't know, but it's, it's everywhere I turn, that's, they're either, their parents are, uh, were never married, you know, so they were born out of wedlock or their parents are divorced or remarried. Very, not that many of them have covenant marriage families. So in Ezekiel 2 and 3 and Ezekiel 33, it says that if you don't, warn them. If you don't sound the alarm and tell the righteous not to turn back into sins, not to go backsliding into sin, if you don't warn them, their blood is on your hands. But if you warn them and they refuse the message, you know, then you wipe the dust from your feet. So I am praying for Nick. I put a lot of those verses on there because grace is not a license to sin, right? Jude um, says that grace is not a license to sin. If you are using the grace of God as a license to sin, you are denying your master and savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, so it turns out that I called the church to ask to speak to the pastor and it's a big church. And I had like a 24 minute conversation with the pastor's uh, secretary, which I did record, which is legal to record. You're, it's legal to record a conversation as long as you are party, one of the parties to the conversation. So no, I did not ask her permission to record it, um, but it's legal that I do that. And she really did not give um, me any much information. So it was really it was mainly me, once again, teaching someone who should know these things. Um, and I don't know how much she does know, but she she said she does know about the Jewish betrothal. And, um, and she said she was going to pass this on to the pastor. And so I'm just kind of waiting to see if he's going to call me. But I have talked to so many pastors. I've talked to pastors of Calvary Chapel churches over the phone, over the phone or through email or through face-to-face. -face. I've talked to Baptist pa pastors, Baptist churches, non-denominational churches, Calvary Chapel churches primarily. Those are who I've, I've talked to. And... Um, it's really sad. It's really sad. But how can you have... Oh, and it turns out 
this morning I thought, oh my goodness, I wonder as I'm working on this video, I wonder if Nick's divorced and remarried parents go to First Redeemer. And he said that they do. So I'm praying for him. I'm praying for him. I'm praying for him and uh, being able to, you know, he's got one shot at it on talking to his parents and trying to show them what he knows that the Bible has to say. And I'm sure they're going to be in shock. But better to warn them and not have you know their blood on his hands. And even if they hate him, Jesus said, you know, the battle would be within your own family. And fortunately, he also texted me this morning that he does not live at home with them. So there is a difference between when you're living at home with the adulterers who claim to be a Christian, which I'm talking about, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. It says you're not even to eat with them. If they claim to be a Christian, we're supposed to judge them. They claim to be a Christian and they are drunkards, adulterers, um, idolaters, all of that. We're not supposed to even eat with them. We certainly aren't supposed to go to church with them. And the once saved, always saved people totally. They'll even talk about 1 Corinthians 5. Because I listened to a message from Jack Kibbs this morning. He is so once saved, always saved. He says that, you know, a, a man who died drunk in a in a drink, you know, he was a drunk driver and he died in his car as a drunk driver, that he still went to heaven. When 1 Corinthians 5 clearly says that the person who is a believer, who is a drunkard, does not go to heaven. And then Jack Kibbs even said that if he, if God kills them because of their sin, but they were ever, ever, ever born again, but God kills them because of their sin, they go to heaven or that, that God is giving Satan permission to kill them and then they go to heaven. But that isn't what first Corinthians five says. And for me, first Corinthians five was the first chapter of the Bible that the Holy Spirit had me open to back in uh, November 2004. And then also today is, um, <laughs> today I just saw 1026, which is like Hebrews 1026. Do we deliberately go on sinning? No, we don't. If we do, you know, we're trampling on the blood of Jesus. There should be deliverance and repentance should be that you, Confess and forsake the sin. That is what repentance is. Godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. And salvation and grace is not to continue in the sin. So um, today is 17 years since my husband called and asked me to come meet him at a restaurant to then tell me that he was divorcing me. And I knew what the Bible said. I knew that it was wrong. I knew that I had not, um, I had not sinned against him. I was not unforgiving. I was trying to keep the marriage going. And um, I was doing everything that God was telling to me, me to do. And God was speaking to me. God's still speaking to me. And I did everything possible to keep the divorce from happening. And people will say, no, you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, God told me to submit to your husband. Even while he's divorcing me, God said to submit to your husband. God's never said he's your ex-husband. God's never said, you know, pray for him to die. I never have, never have prayed for him to die. Because I know that if he dies, he will go to hell. I don't want him to die and go to hell. I wouldn't want my worst enemy. You know, you hate me. I still don't hate you back. You hate me. You cheat on me. You lie and lie about me. You slander me. I don't hate you back. But I know that judgment is coming. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And the wicked will perish, even if they claim to be believers. And so the only... You know, it's not like I sit around and 
pine away. I'm in, I'm enjoying myself uh, serving the Lord every day. I am, I'm amazed at the things that God gives me to do. But I know what his fate is going to be unless he truly repents. And if he were to truly repent, just like the believers in the church at Thyatira, they were believers in the church at Thyatira. And he said, you must repent, repent of your adultery or you'll be going into great tribulation and I will kill your children with death. God is going to be the one doing the killing during the tribulation of these people that refuse to repent of their adultery. And how do we know, really, how do we know when they have presumed on the grace of God that they aren't already condemned, as it says in um at it, as it says in uh, Jude, right? I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches. First Redeemer, you've got this problem. Saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. For they have denied our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. And then 1 John 3, 9, those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. And what about, what about 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 34? Oh, goodness, where is it? 50, uh, for, uh, well, first, what about Titus? 2, 11 through 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that would include denying adultery and fornication, we should live soberly. Drunkards are not going in the rapture. Jack Hibbs, no, drunk, drunkards are not going in the rapture righteously and godly in the present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ and 1 Corinthians 15 you know Jesus said I'll forgive you of your adultery but go and sin no more right isn't that what Jesus said yes that is what Jesus said go and sin no more don't keep on living in adultery. And then 1 Corinthians 15, it says, uh, verse 30, And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If in the manner of men I have fought with beast at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we may die. Or let's eat and drink and party it up sexually, right? Or continue to commit adultery. Verse 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. <clears throat> I speak this to your shame. And this is right before it talks about the rapture verses. Same as in 1 Thessalonians 4. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God, our Father, as we have taught you. You live this way already. You know, if, if, if I'm reading, you know, I'm hoping, I'm, I know Nick is going to watch the video because I already told Nick I was almost finished with it. Um, you know, I'm encouraging Nick to continue. And he did too. He said, stay strong in the faith. You know, I'm encouraging him to live this way already. And we encourage you to do so even more. So Nick, I'm encouraging you even more to live in a way that pleases God. And then verse 2, For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus? God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. 
you know, it's wonderful that Nick hasn't done any of that. You know, he doesn't look at porn. I mean, his parents have done a good job raising him, honestly. He said also that he was, um, what is that group? It's that thing that you do in a fundamentalist church, uh, Awanus or something. It's where like Bible drills and stuff for uh, young people. So then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer, a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. So, you know, I'm I'm not picking on Nick's parents. I mean, there's so many divorced or married parents. But if you were to think about it, let's just say Nick's, par- Nick's parents are divorced or remarried. His mother's covenant husband is being violated by the second husband's adultery with her. So, you know, he is a, bel- the second husband is supposed to be a believer But he's committing adultery against the first husband, the first husband, the covenant husband. And they are both alive still. So that's what that is. It says in verse 6, Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. That's why I have to warn. That's why I have to warn. Why are people not talking about this? I would hate to be left behind. Verse 7, God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Like, how terrible is this? Oh, and then, of course, you know, it talks about living in love and and it's not like I'm it's not truly it's not like I'm going around seeking out these churches to rebuke but when someone walks into my yard and he goes to first redeemer and his divorced and parent remarried parents go to first redeemer I have to say something Because this church really, truly does think that they're all a great church and going in the rapture. Yeah, like this video, when is the rapture, the end, part five, when is the rapture? It has 173,000 views from three years ago. When is the second coming? 147,000 views. What is the seven year tribulation? 129,000 views. The one that, uh, I started seeing that YouTube was pushing was about when will the end time invasion of Israel take place? And it has 228,000 views. He's been talking about the rapture for quite a long time. You can't just, you can't just tell people about the rapture and how to go, you know, and, and what the rapture is with, you know, he's got the thing about Daniel's 70th week. I know that that's right. I watched it. It's, it is definitely right. It has 164,000 views. It's completely right about the rapture and, and then the 70th week of Daniel. He understands Israel. He understands. And they also had um, Jeff Kinley speak at that church. And Jeff Kinley is an excellent prophecy person. I don't know if he's divorced or remarried. I do know that there are people that are writing about the rapture who are divorced or married. Jonathan, uh, I want to say his name is Brentner, something like that. He writes for raptureready.com and for Jan Markell. He's got his articles are on Jan Markell's things. So anyway, I'm praying that this man, this pastor, will really care his name is jeff jackson jeff jackson i pray that he will uh contact me and then i will have done what i can do and if he doesn't contact me then i still have done what i can do (laughs) 
All we can do is pray. Pray. Well, I might as well sing this song that the Holy Spirit gave me on March 4th of 2021 at 2.22 in the afternoon. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. But I use it to examine myself, and I ask you, if you've hung in here this long, to examine yourself by it also, right? Any of us could be left behind. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. Oh, what can we do to save him from harm? Because he didn't sound the alarm. Holy Spirit, give them courage. Before it's too late, and they miss the date with Jesus the Lord in the sky. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. We pray now this day. He didn't speak the truth. Being left behind is the proof. Holy Spirit, give them repentance to fear God, not man. Tribulation, the plan. Be killed for your faith and go home. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. They tickled your ears. Big churches and fun. But he's now on the run. Holy Spirit, Jesus judges. Use grace as a license to sin. The unrighteous you will not let in. Mark God and will reap what they sowed. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. How shocked they must be. Lives of sin they did hide. Cause they were filled with pride. Holy Spirit, God is justice. May some testify why they stayed. They thought in their heart you delayed. What grief must be theirs for this day. Save a pastor who's not going in the rapture. Could you show him right now? False teachings he gave, lying lips while he prayed. Holy Spirit, convict and break him. The time is right now, hypocrites not allowed. Repent and be cleansed of all sin. Anyway, thanks for watching. Pray for Nick. Pray for him to get his parachute on tight. Tight, tight, tight. And for him to have courage, because it does say, you know, all cowards go to the lake of fire too. So we don't want to be cowards. We want to be courageous. That's Revelation 21.8. Thanks for watching. And, you know, I know all of y'all are in your own battles too. So I pray for you. I pray that um, you are strong in the Lord. This life is not supposed to be easy. This life is supposed to be difficult while we're on the narrow, difficult road. Oh, come Lord Jesus. Maranatha.